Welcome back to Panda Pen Club. Today, I'm going to review the Moon Man T2 fountain pen. I'm filming this very early in the morning in a carefully framed angle of my apartment because I'm in the process of moving and I'm in the process of being very, very disorganized. I'm pretty sure somebody with a van is gonna turn up fairly soon and they're going to walk in and walk out again, I expect, but I'm doing my best. I've even put aftershave on. The name of this pen, the Moon Man T2, that's not Terminator 2, that's not truculent, that's not treasure. It's the name of this pen. I can't explain to you why. It's that I have a two-tone Moon Man T2 and this isn't because I've been incredibly cunning and, and ferreted out some special iteration of the Moon Man T2 available to no other human being. I have simply owned two versions of this pen the silver one and the pink one, or copper as some people call it, although I'm fairly sure this is apple rose gold and I've destroyed one of them. Through a combination of my own somewhat agitated nature and a flaw with this pen, which I'm going to get into shortly with some relish. So it's known as the Moon Man T2, Terminator 2, Treasure 2. It's also occasionally listed as the Moon Man Elastic Piston. That is because of its rather splendid filling mechanism, which I'm attempting to get access to at the moment, thus illustrating one of the little problems I've had with this pen. More on that later. Elastic Piston. So we have a sprung load piston filling system on the Moon Man T2, which is not unique. It recalls the Twisby Go or the Pen BBS 500, but it's certainly a nice little convenience. Having seen a post by a, a man who is a double amputee on Fountain Pen Network Facebook group this morning, as I blearily emerged into my panic stricken day, which really isn't that much of a challenge as it turns out. He put up a really interesting post about how he's setting himself new challenges as part of his recovery and one of them was filling a piston filler pen with only the use of one hand. One of the few virtues of this pen I would say is that it could be filled rather conveniently one-handed by virtue of this spring mechanism. Leonardo da Vinci invented one of the first uses of a coiled spring or something akin to a coiled spring spring in the mechanism of small firearms, pistols, handguns, handheld weaponry. His version included a spring which enabled it to be one of the first firearms that could essentially be operated one-handed. The spring allowed it to be pre-wound so the person carrying the weapon didn't need to carry a separate source of flames with them in order to set the damn thing off. And as a result, Mr. Da Vinci's invention facilitated some of the first political assassinations because you could carry a pistol around, take aim and fire with much less fuss than you could previously because of Mr. Da Vinci's spring mechanism enabling you to operate the infernal item one-handed. I say Mr. Da Vinci because in fact there is a degree of academic debate poking around into whether or not this was indeed Leonardo da Vinci. Some people rather adamantly and yet mysteriously attribute it to an unknown German engineer. If you want to go back even further and perhaps even scratch your way towards relevance to Panda Pen Club, there are certain corners of academic debate that attribute many of Leonardo da Vinci's inventions to the Chinese. Well, I will say two things. One, Leonardo da Vinci invented a spring mechanism that enabled firearms to be operated one-handed. Although this filling system was quite definitely not invented by Moon Man, it also enables the Moon Man T2 to be potentially filled one-handed. What's also interesting is that there is some debate over the provenance of Mr. Da Vinci's invention, and there is some quite settled debate over this pen's design. This design, on the face of it, looks rather splendid. A little bit of research will reveal a habit which Moon Man seems to have been drawn into of identifying a slightly lesser known pen manufacturer's design and replicating it. Stipula. They make a pen which is identical to this one aside from its copper nib. This is lamentable, disappointing, <sighs> just a little wearying really. This pen is well made, mostly. 
There are some design features which I'm troubled by, which I will get into shortly. But everything about this pen is tight, neat. The materials from the anodized aluminium exterior to the chrome furniture to the acrylic ink window to the rather lovely way that the brand name is carved into the acrylic ink window. All of it feels good and of course it's equipped with Moon Man's ever reliable number six nib. And yet this pen is more or less an identical copy of the Stipula pen. And it almost, because it's such a habit on Moon Man's part and because they put such a lot of effort and manifest such a lot of skill and scalable high caliber workmanship in their pens, you just have to sort of say, why? Why make a facsimile? Most people in the casual fountain pen buying market are not going to find out about the stipula. I guess that's the idea. But it comes off as a terribly cynical way of operating. And not only that, it comes off as a, a strange, slightly eerie lack of confidence on Moon Man's part. A couple of mad moments and a napkin to suggest some alterations at least that would throw people off the scent a bit. I'm a fan of many of Moon Man's pens and my inclination is to defend some of what they do. The C2, for example, and you can check out my review on that on this channel. I feel comfortable defending the C2. The T2, however, troubles me. The Moon Man troubles me too. So now I've finished ranting and rambling, let's get on to the specifics of this pen. Because it comes with Moon Man's number six nib and the writing experience with Moon Man's number six nib is wildly consistent, I'm not going to do a writing sample for this pen. Also because I'm terrified that my van guy is going to turn up and not only find my apartment very much not ready to move, but he's going to find me reviewing a fountain pen. My issues with this pen, apart from the copying. They all begin with operating the pen, which is strange when it, you remember that it has this elastic convenience at the back. So let's have a quick tour of this pen. This one survives. This is 140 millimeters in length capped. It is 123 millimeters in length uncapped. It's hefty. Its weight capped is 52 grams. Its weight uncapped is 32 grams. The cap therefore is 20 grams in weight. And that's all fine, really. I don't have a problem with heavy pens. However, the problems emerge for me once you get the cap off and once you start writing for even a mildly extended period of time. You have this chrome section and it's so highly polished. You will find yourself constantly exercising muscles you never knew you needed in order to keep rearranging your fingers around the section because you keep losing your grip. It's not so much the weight that is the problem, it's the fact you can't hold on to it in any consistent way without applying an unfamiliar degree of pressure through your lower lower knuckles. And it sounds like a really, really wet little complaint really, but it's not. It, it makes the writing experience painful, quite literally as well as psychologically, and inconvenient. And you lose some of the benefits of Moon Man's fabled storied number six nib due to your constantly having to rearrange your fingers back to the, the right spot. And again, I emphasize it's not the weight, it's the slippery nature of this metal section. And I don't even have a problem with metal sections usually. You know, the Sailor Black Luster has a metal section, but it's not as highly polished and not as slippery as this one. And I'm not a particularly sweaty individual either, I should add. So that's my first issue with the apparently high build quality of this pen. My second issue. So I have the cap on. I haven't screwed the cap particularly tightly and I'm trying to uncap it and I find this happening. The shaft sheath, if you will, unscrews more readily than the cap. This is a major problem in my book. It really makes getting the lid off this pen a pain because you only have this small inch or so of acrylic to grip onto and, and it's, it's not a comfortable pen to use. So while I've sung the praises of this pen as a possibility for people with severe disabilities to fill one-handed, it's in fact a major pain to use because of these design flaws. You have this sheath shaft unscrewing, unbidden, even more a pain is to get the lid off correctly. Sometimes when you find yourself trying to do that, you'll find yourself actually unscrewing this little metal flange here, 
that connects the shaft sheath to the acrylic window. And this may confuse you. You may not notice that you've unscrewed the flange instead of the shaft sheath, and you'll be pulling on this. And the spring and the piston knob at the top will not come out. So you'll be pulling like this, and you'll think something has gone wrong. And then, if you're me, you may start to panic. You may start rampaging through drawers looking for a hammer. You may put the pen down on the kitchen floor and start hammering the... Th and then you may realize your mistake. You may realize that, in fact, you've unscrewed the flange, not the sheath shaft. And all you need to do is screw the flange back in, pincer the flange edges, and unscrew the sheath shaft. And there we have it, unscrewed again. If you've really gone to town with the hammer, you, you will find yourself the one who's screwed. And you may have to console yourself with a two-toned colour scheme instead of the original pen you thought you were going to review weeks ago. I didn't need to get the hammer out, that's true. I find it quite an inconvenient one to use. With the copying, with the screwing, unscrewing uncertainty, and with the slippery chrome section, the price point of this pen doesn't warrant that degree of mucking around. There are better ones out there. There are better ones out there by Moonman. If you enjoyed watching this video, please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to Panda Pen Club on YouTube. And when you click subscribe, please click the bell as well. It really helps us. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.